Welcome to today's EESI podcast. Our subject today is Benefit Renewal Best Practices. And our special guest is Taryn Walker. Taryn has 22 years in the benefit operations field, and she is currently Benefits Manager at EESI. Taryn, welcome to our program today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Let's get right to it. Let's talk about best practices. What do you think are the three most important things for our listeners to know as they consider their benefit renewals? That's a great question, Lou, and I couldn't agree with you more. Some really important things in order to have your benefits go smoothly at renewal time is one, making sure you turn in your paperwork on time. (laughs) The other thing is plan for the enrollment. Make sure you have your documents, evaluate what your needs are, really think about it and spend some time with it. And then my third would be talk about benefits, make it easy, make it exciting, make it where people can understand. Let's walk through those three points. Let's talk about your paperwork. Explain a little more detail. Sure thing, absolutely. So when selecting benefits, of course, the carriers always require you to complete documents, you know, basic information about yourself and not getting the paperwork completed and turned in timely ultimately could delay or prevent an enrollment. Carriers have guidelines about when you can turn in paperwork and how much time you actually have to do that in order to retain the proper effective date. So I have a situation going on right now, actually. I have an employee and it's the last day for them to turn in their benefits. It's the end of the month. Their benefits are effective the first of the next month. So because that information didn't get sent over to us timely, we kind of have to be in a scramble all day just to make sure that everything gets documented, all the paperwork gets completed, and that we turn it over to the carrier in timely. Not doing that has an impact on the employee's payroll. It has an impact on the bill and also an impact on access to care. We want to make sure everything is completed and sent to the carrier. So if you need to go to the doctor at the first of the month, you are in the system, enrolled, and don't have any issues. Let's talk about planning for enrollment. What do you mean by that? What kind of things would that entail? Definitely. So in completing the paperwork, it does ask for your basic information, name, date of birth, social, address, things such of that nature. What we do find oftentimes is because you're filling out that paperwork, you may not have, for instance, a spouse's social security number or your child's social security number. And you think, oh, I'll get back to that. Oftentimes, that get back to it doesn't happen, resulting in an enrollment omitting a person from your application. So then it creates a situation where we have to go back and forth to make sure that person gets enrolled. And sometimes it's easy and and sometimes it's not. So if you know you're going to be enrolling a family, make sure that you know everyone's date of birth. Make sure hey, everyone in the family is actually accounted for. (laughs) Make sure you have their social security numbers. And oftentimes your children may be at a different address or off in college. And that's important because those things will be mailed to that child, meaning ID cards or explanation of benefits. So you want to have all of that together when you're completing your paperwork. It's the best way to ensure a timely and accurate enrollment. Very helpful. Before we move on to talk about benefits and making it uh, some exciting, as, as you put it before, Karen, <laughs> what are the timelines? When should a company start working on benefit renewals? What are the timelines they need to be aware of so they can make sure they have the time to get all the things that they need? That's a great question. So we here at ESI are already in the process of bringing in extraordinary renewal period to our clients. So we look at it about 90 days, if not more out, and we begin to gather everything we need so that we can present it to the employer or employee in a timely manner. Generally, within 30 days of the actual effective date of the enrollment, you want to make sure we're having conversations about rates and plans and enrollments. So if you want your enrollment to be effective the first day of the month, so for right now, let's just say October 1st, you want to make sure you probably have your paperwork in at least a week or two before that. So we have time to take a look at it and the carrier has time to get it enrolled into their system to make sure when you're ready to go, they're ready to go as well. Are there any specific dates, for example, health insurance that are the same for everyone? Well, you know, the big month with health insurance right now is January 1st. 
there are a lot of groups that renew for January 1st. And the thing to keep in mind there is the carriers are also impacted with their workload, making sure that all of their groups are ready in time for January 1st. So definitely, if you are on a 1-1 of any given year renewal cycle, you want to make sure that you're allotting enough time to meet to discuss rates, to discuss plans, to get paperwork completed and submitted to the carrier so that by 1-1, you are ready to go. Something key to keep in mind there is that there are two major holidays kind of in that period also where carriers are not there. So that elongates the enrollment process. If you have not gathered the documents well and worked ahead of time, what are some of the things that can happen regarding enrollment? Do you have any horror stories you want to share with us? Oh, absolutely, I do. I have one that's actually going on right now. I had a family who had a newborn, and all of their children were already enrolled, but the newborn wasn't. And not having that information available prevented that newborn from getting enrolled. What ultimately happened there is the family went to the doctor, of course, to get a checkup done for their child, and they wound up having to pay for that coverage 100% out of their pocket because the child wasn't showing enrolled at the time. Now, of course, we were able to assist and help get the child enrolled, and we can help take care of those things, but that's a situation that can definitely be avoided by making sure you're prepared and having the data that you need to complete the paperwork. Do you have any tips for small business owners that are trying to get everyone to get their documents in on time that might help them? You know, and that's where I come back and say, talk about it and make it exciting. You know, having all of these years of experience, um, one of my passions is teaching people about their benefits so that when you're sick, you know what to do as opposed to trying to figure it out when you're sick. So having open dialogue, maybe posting flyers, hey, open enrollment is coming, incentivizing your employees to participate and be timely is all great options. Definitely working with your EESI team because we do check and balances on how many people have enrolled and how many are left to enroll to try to make sure that we're catching all the timelines for you. Now, one of the things that small business owners may not know is that EESI enables a small business owner to compete with larger Fortune 500 type companies because of their buying power and because of the way that the PEO is organized and structured. So small business employers can compete with the larger companies by working with a PEO like EESI. Explain why that is to us and what some of the benefits would be. For example, they have access to voluntary benefits, I think. Being a small business employer, partnering with the PEO, specifically ESI, does allow you to take advantage of large group pricing. So that way your pricing isn't necessarily by how old you are and all of these different factors that go into the rating. ESI is able to shop all of the carriers for you, as well as the PEO plan, which we call a master plan from time to time. So that way we can make sure that you are getting the best coverage for your group, for yourself, and not just the coverage that's out there because you're a small group of two or three. So it's a different platform and it's a different rating system by partnering with a PEO. And we definitely encourage that. Are there any other secrets that might be helpful to a small business owner about ways that by partnering with EESI, they can improve their employment package offering? Yeah, absolutely. So partnering with EESI, we have a very robust voluntary benefit package. And again, that's another area where you are able to take advantage of a larger group employer type of rating. We are able to put together a comprehensive package for you. Larger employers are able to a la carte, if you will, and bring in some benefits that may not be available to a smaller employer. So for ESI specifically, we have voluntary life. We have enhanced dental and vision plans. I can tell you um, our vision plan, I've not ever seen one until I've come to an establishment like this. And we can bring that to your employer groups. Vision is very important when you are needing to see, wouldn't you think? (laughs) So we definitely have those options. 
And I would think that most small business owners understand, of course, but the voluntary benefits are not benefits that you have to pay for. Of course, they're the ones that the employees want, but they pay for them themselves. So it really enables you to give them what they want that they could not get on their own. And it doesn't really cost you anything. That is correct. So the voluntary benefits are 100% employee paid. So that does mean that the employer does not necessarily have the financial responsibility for it, that the employer does take on that for themselves. But it does allow them to take advantage of what they want to enroll in without having to be required to enroll in a product they may want and a product they may not necessarily want. So it allows them to create a pretty comprehensive package for themselves on top of the comprehensive package that the employer would already be offering for their employees. Well, thank you, Taryn. Very helpful. Are there any additional points you want to cover that we haven't already covered about best practices for benefit renewals? The only thing I would say is just to recap and say, you know, make sure you're partnering with EESI. We are definitely here to help you through the renewal process and to ensure that you understand your benefits and make sure that you're offering a comprehensive package to your employees. We are committed to making it as easy and as simple as possible. Definitely focusing on what's best for you and your group. So continue to keep the communication open. We will be reaching out to all of our groups very, very quickly, offering them comprehensive packages and evaluations and guiding them through the process. So looking forward to that. Well, thank you, Taryn. I really appreciate your insights and your experience in this field, and I think it was very helpful to our listeners. Thank you so much. If you are not currently working with a PEO like EESI, you might consider giving us a call because benefits packages have become even more significant in a company's ability to attract top talent and to retain their best employees. And this is the time to renew your company benefits. So put together a package that enables you to compete with a competition in your industry. And of course, a PEO like EESI can help you do that much better than you can on your own and more cost effectively too. EESI can help small businesses put together Fortune 500 type benefits that allow you to compete against larger competition. And uh, that's really an important and valuable tool or asset that's available to you when you partner with EESI. Simply contact our benefits department with your questions at 210-495-1171. That's 210-495-1171. Or send us an email at benefits at eesipeo.com and request a free consultation. Again, that's benefits at eesipeo.com. Thank you for listening. Part of our goal at EESI to help you simplify business.